Okay. Okay. In a few moments, we'll start the opening ceremony of the 59th Annecy's International Animation Film Festival with a much-awaited world premiere. And we are thrilled to have with us Lino Di Salvo, executive producer and director of the movie Playmobil. Hello, Lino. Hello, how are you? I'm, I'm just doing a oh, Playmobil you're doing check. The thing. Yes. Okay. <laughs> Thank you for being with us uh, right before such an important screening for you. How do you feel before the first it's premiere exciting. as a director? It's exciting, it's nerve-wracking, it's terrifying, it's exciting, terrifying. <laughs> so, it's amazing. I mean, all the hard work is done. Yeah. Right? So for three years, you iterate, and you put the movie up, you take it down, you put it up, you take it down. And then here we are, and I get to watch it with animation fans. So this is holidays. The, uh, uh, after the, uh, let's talk after the movie. As a lot of children, you were a fan of Disney Studio production, of course. Yeah. But you had a, some special track. It started in 1994 with a very special movie for you. Can you tell us more about that? Is that, let's see, is that Lion King? I think so. <laughs> um, so as a kid, I always loved animation. It was very magical to me the medium, how these animated characters that you knew weren't real, how a talented animator can pull you into that world and make you believe something that is inanimate, give it life. So yeah, I mean, that was, I got the bug and I wanted to be an animator and um, you know, I told my parents I wanted to be a Disney animator and they were like, you know, good parents. Oh yeah, you'll, yeah, you'll be a Disney animator one day. And I was very lucky the stars were aligned and um, I got to do that. They helped you a lot. Yeah, my well, family, they very, trust you. very supportive. I come from an Italian background. My parents are from Italy and they own a restaurant. So they could have said, you're going into the restaurant business. But they knew I really loved animation and they supported me. And um, I got into Vancouver Film School. And then, um, back then, this is uh, mid, early, early 90s, portfolios were very expensive. So the, the professors would tell you, don't waste your portfolios on the big studios. Because they're not going to say yes, you're just a student. And I was like, what? I went to school to be a Disney, I want to be, I want to be working with the big studios. Um, obviously when you're young you're so naive, but I was very lucky. I sent Disney my portfolio, they liked it, and I spent almost 17 years there. Um, you, you, were, you were one of the youngest uh, animators to join the, the I, studios, right? I think so. Um, it was really, I mean the thing is animation, you're always judged. So coming in as a young uh, animator working with your idols, right? Because I studied Glenn Keane and Eric Goldberg, and now they're in dailies critiquing my work. <laughs> it's terrible. It was, uh, but man, uh, I think I'm the filmmaker I am today because of my journey at Disney. And how, how did uh, Glenn Keane and all those legends uh, change your eye, your mind, and your heart as an animator. Yeah. The thing is, is that I, my style of animation is, um, I, I feel like I'm less strong at the physical, um, the, the, the technical and the physical part of animation. My love for animation is the acting, mm -hmm. is the emotion, is the subtleties in the acting. Um, and Glenn does that very well. He probably does that better than so, most people uh, in the animation industry. And um, so, you know, Tangled happened. I think mm. it was called Rapunzel here. Yes. Um, and I got to supervise with Glenn. So talk about, you know, your journey coming full circle. And I got to animate the Flynn Rider character in Rapunzel. Um, and. Uh, yeah, I mean, the influences at Disney, I mean, it's the best of the best people. So now when I make movies, I take everything that, you know, all those years at Disney of hearing, of them critiquing your work, I try to put that in my animation. And speaking of animation and the movie you're here for, uh, how did you 
overpass the constraint of uh, giving life to yeah. a, a very well-known character, but yet unanimated. Right. I really think that limitations are very good for animation. Mm -hmm. I think when you embrace limitations, it's inherently funny. So no, everyone knows Playmobil is a very limited character. So I wanted to make sure that I honored that. Um, but the thing for me is I have a house with both Lego and Playmobil. Hmm. And um, my children play with both often. I play with my children. So when I watched my children play with those toys differently, that ended up becoming my movie. So for me, watching my children play with Lego, I think the joy from Lego very much comes from following the instructions and building stuff. I love, I'm a huge Lego fan. But my children, they role play when they play with Playmobil. And so I, I, I'm like, that, that's the movie, is role playing. Mm. So we designed the whole narrative around a real human person that has to role play in order to save her brother. So she literally turns into a toy uh, and then goes on this journey. Um, but again, research, research, research. It's something I'm obsessed with. And actually, the, the role playing is also the animation secret. That's right. That's what Glenn King told, yeah. that you have to be the, the character 100%. you're animating. 100%. Do the research, do the homework, um, find the limitations. We would always say, what are the truths? What is the truth in that object? And for me, for Playmobil, there were two main things that stood out to me, which helped craft the film, mm -hmm. define the film. One was role playing, and the other was genres. So Playmobil, it's so obvious now, but Playmobil, I started realizing that they make genres, right? Fairy tale, spy, the Vikings. Um, I'm like, oh my gosh, they're doing something that they would do when I watch a movie. Mm -hmm. And the other thing that's very unique with Playmobil is that they don't tell you who the hero in the box is, right? That's so right. when you buy a Playmobil box, it could be anybody. The farmer, um, the knight, uh, the little kid. So I noticed that with, when my children would play with Playmobil, it didn't matter who it was, they would define the hero. Mm -hmm. So I love that. So I'm like, oh, that's cool. That's a very unique thing in the toy world where they're not telling you this person must win. Th yeah, this is the person that's going to lead the play. You make it up. So in my movie, too, it's like she goes into this world unhero and then she leaves being a hero. So Playmobil Box is like an animation film kit. It totally <laughs> is. Totally. You are the voice of a Robot Eatern yeah. in Playmobil, the movie. Uh, is this a, a necess is, is it necessary to keep the fun when you're the, the conductor or the director of the whole orchestra? I feel guilty that I cast myself. <laughs> um, it's so heavily processed, you won't even know it's my voice. Okay. Because if it sounded like me, I never would have done it. So you, you cannot play Robot Tron right now? No, no it's, it's um, um, because he's a very simple looking character and mm -hmm. he was built in the 80s. What I wanted to do was honor, um, so he actually sounds like a toy from the 1980s, and he only has two word sentences. Because um, I wanted to keep him very limited, because he has those big round eyes, these mm -hmm. very cute round eyes. Um, so I wanted to honor that. Okay. Uh, yeah. Contrary to Playmobil the movie, you are working as director too on the next unanimation project. And it's a much more intimately rooted project for you. Yeah. Uh, can you tell us more about this Badalisk, please? How much can I say? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> um, so there's this folklore in Italy. There's this festival for two days, um, January 5th and 6th. And there's this mythological creature called the Badalisk. And he has special powers. Um, he has special abilities. And my movie, you can see what I'm doing. I'm trying to tiptoe around it. But the movie is about this, um, uh, this girl that is going to realize there's something very special with her. And she finds this magical creature. I love movies that are about the monster and the, the human. 
But I feel like a lot of those type of stories, they're always told where the magical being is always the monster and the human is the human. <laughs> I, I want to do something a little bit different, which is you think the monster is the magical thing, but it ends up being, being her. Man. I said too much. Well, stop. Okay. Admit, I said too much. This is your very first time in NC. Yep. Uh, although Playmobil was here last year. That's right. At the working progress. Yeah. I was shooting the live action. Okay. For Playmobil, that's why I couldn't be here. I, I was not asking for an excuse. <laughs> But will you be there next year uh, with Badalisk as a work in progress? Oh, that's a good question. Maybe. We hope so. Good. My last question yes. for you uh, will be asked to all our guests here. I would like to, you to look at the camera and uh, give a special thanks to uh, an animated character that has changed your life. I would like you to, oh, man, to call out one. the little child in you and tell to that character oh, man, how much... Oh, man, a lot of pressure. I know. Buzz and Woody from Toy Story. Um, so I was on my journey to become a hand-drawn animator. And then a little movie came out called Toy Story. And as I was signing up for school, um, uh, and I was thinking about my future plans, I saw Toy Story and I completely shifted. And I decided to be a CG animator. Now what's interesting is at the time, a lot of people thought CG was a fad. That, it, that they, people thought I was crazy. Um, but I saw Buzz and Woody, Uh, on the big screen, and I'm like, that's what I want to do. Um, so I became a CG animator, and now I'm uh, writing my own stories and directing my own films. So thank you, Buzz. Thank you very much. <laughs> and thank you very much, thank you, sir. Lino. Let's keep this going. Yes, and for the whole year. Thank you. Because this is your year. And thank you for thank being you. there. Thank you, I appreciate it.